Hi everyone, my name is Bo Sanders and today I want to talk to you about this temptation towards nostalgia, this impulse to long for and try and recapture an imagined or romanticized past. It shows up in so many places, specifically within religion, but you know, in politics too, with uh, Make America Great and other uh, impulses like this. But within religion, there seems to be a unique compulsion to try and return or reform or reframe or reimagine to recapture some previous uh, era or expression or moment. It's for me problematic on several levels. One of which is it, the implication is that God worked better or stronger in the past and that we have a diminishing or diluted version of something that was pure or primitive in its previous form. The second is just the impossibility of returning to the past because the return is uh, taking with us the fact that something has changed and then to try and return to that, but we bring with us that which has happened. It's We're always embedded in, in a moment. We are socially located creatures. And so we cannot escape back to the first century. It's impossible. So there's a fantasy or a fiction involved in that, a, a, um, a social imaginary that makes me nervous. And then the third thing is that it doesn't frame us in a posture, an orientation towards how God is presently at work among us, that God is at work in the world in a way that propels us into the future. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of how this looks and, and, and talk about why uh, I'm so nervous about it. I get sent books from time to time or invitations to review books and, um, you can't believe how many of them are predicated on the R-E words. This is a new book by Alan Roxburgh, who I have liked his work, um, but the, the company, the publisher that sent me this invitation sent this little snippet, and I'll put it up on the screen too. Exhausted with trying to fix the church, it's time to turn in a new direction, back to the Holy Spirit. In this insightful book, internationally renowned scholar and leader Alan Roxburgh urges Christians to follow the Spirit into our neighborhoods. Here it goes. Re-engage with the mission of God, reimagine the whole enterprise of the church, and later it says remaking the church. And that's just one example of this posture, this disposition towards the past. And to be oriented that way is problematic because we're also then when we reach back into the past to try and import it into our present moment, we are bringing with it all of the embedded structures, whether that's uh, Christendom and, and Constantinian compromise, colonialism, the hierarchies uh, in race, in uh, the patriarchy. You can't just import uh, ancient or antiquated notions without any consequence of the embedded structures and priorities that uh, are found there. Ideas don't form in a vacuum. They are part of, embedded in, and actually emerge out of uh, systems and structures, institutions and frameworks. So you can't just pluck out an idea or a concept, a moment, an expression, and bring it into the present moment without causing uh, huge implications for the systems that they were embedded in. Here's another one somebody sent me. The Gospel Reset, Salvation Made Relevant. Two RE words in the titles. It just goes on and on. I could show you 50 examples this morning about uh, how prevalent these RE words are. Now, I just want to say, some people say, oh man, this is just semantics. This is just word games or rhetoric. But I want to say, for me, it is not. It actually is a deep spiritual and theological conviction that we have access to the good things of God, the gospel, the good news of God's love, and the power of God's spirit in this present moment. That God actually calls to us in a sense. God is the power of the future, uh, calling back into each moment with possibility and potential for a preferable future. So our orientation, our uh, 
longing for the past for me shows that there is something in our spiritual enterprise, in our theological projects that is in denial, both about our present situation, not taking seriously the postmodern situation that we find ourselves in, this, this context of culture, and instead a longing for some romanticized or imagined past. Here's another place that it shows up. Um, I was talking with a pastor, a charismatic pastor, who actually is doing a pretty, uh, I think, pretty innovative thing within his uh, networks and circles. But his project, he wants to resource the church. And by that, he means take the church back to its source, to resource it. And this really piqued my interest because there's this other group that's not charismatic. In fact, they're trying to get the church to be more Anglican. And uh, so it manifests in radical orthodoxy is one name for it on the other side of the pond. Here it gets under monikers like whether it's the Christian Coalition or uh, sorry, the Gospel Coalition or uh, the Missio Alliance and, and other groups like this that are sort of in that post-liberal camp. Uh, that they want to, they call it resourcement, resourcement in French. And so it piqued my interest because he didn't know about resourcement. And, but it's, it's still this idea to resource, that if we take the church back to its sources, and by that they mean the early churches, the patristic era, um, the, the early church fathers, that if we took the church back to its sources, then we could find a rummage, uh, I always like to say like recycle or repurpose, refined, whatever the RE word is, um, that there we would find the answers to the questions that the 21st century is posing. And, and I'm going to argue, and this for me isn't a shtick, this isn't a gimmick, this is not uh, just uh, rhetoric for me, this is, I'm not playing semantics. I actually think that our orientation towards the past and our posture towards our present moment is problematic. And so I just wanted to say, keep your eyes out. You can send me more examples. I always appreciate the feedback. And I am collecting these things because between our political environment currently, our cultural context of chaos, the decline narrative in church attendance, especially in the mainline, and these uh, proliferation of theological projects that begin with RE. When you start putting them together, uh, say as a mosaic, you a, a picture starts to develop where you realize that we don't know how to answer the questions that our moment is asking us. And so the, the impulse is to return to previous answers and try and tweak them a little bit and import them into our present moment. But I'm under the conviction that not only do we need different questions, we need different answers. The questions that are being asked of us about things like community and pluralism, faith, family, and so economy, environment, so many other situations in our current day that are asking us for theological reflection, that both different questions and different answers to get us out of our round and round conflicts because we live in this argument culture as De Deborah Tannen calls it where the not just the the contentious the animosity the adversarial posture uh, has caused a great division we're so polarized now that we don't even have an arena in which to uh, mediate. We don't have a mechanism for which to work together. And so there is a fracturing, a tearing, a rupture in the fabric of our culture and society. And we have the opportunity to speak into this moment with hope and grace and faith. But we have to take seriously our present moment and our cultural context. Let me know your thoughts. I would love uh, your feedback, comments, questions, concerns.